All right, welcome back to Turd Towns, the channel that shines a light on the lesser known places in the UK. But today is something a bit different. Welcome to Posh Towns. You rang, my lord. I thought this would be an interesting series to make because so far the most common comment I've received in my Turd Towns videos is that all of the UK looks like this now. You know, turd. And whilst I somewhat agree with that statement when it comes to our seaside towns, there are still some towns and villages still thriving in the UK, and I can prove it. But first, I'd like you all to let me know what your definition of posh is. Put it down in the comment section. Because everyone has a different perception of posh. Does solely having a lot of money make you posh? Well, we figured we would base today's towns and villages on four criteria. You heard that, four. If you're from Bridgewater, that's your entire hand. So it's the average house price, the closeness to exceptional schooling, having a low crime rate, and finally, a posh town has to have its own unique look and feel that projects wealth. We also have ruled out small villages. There's got to be some shops in order for a place to qualify for this list. And before we get into the list, don't forget to like and subscribe and help Turd Towns thrive. Here are the eight poshest towns in Somerset County. Number eight, Langport. Here we go, the town with a population of 3,500, located in South Somerset, surrounded by Moorland. On the surface of it, Langport isn't that posh, but going by our four criteria, Langport does okay, and in some respects, could be seen as posh. Let's start with the positives. The place looks fairly nice, it's quaint enough, but yet it still feels like there's some stuff going on here, despite the small size of the place. It has nice riverbank walks, as the River Yo and the River Parrot crash together here. This also brings some passing trade from tourists into the town. Last year, Londoners were asked to rank the best places in Somerset to live, and Langport topped that list for some reason. So if a bunch of rich cockneys buy a second home here, it must be deemed as a posh place, as it's acceptable to the likes of them. Whilst the school in Langport only received a rating of good from Ofsted, that won't really matter to posh people as there is a number of private schools around within a 10 mile radius. Langport has an average house price of 362,000, which is far away above the England average of 295,000. Believe it or not, 362,000 is going to be cheap compared to what I've got in store for you on this list. Like many places in the southwest, it desperately needs a train station here. The line runs to the south of the town and it almost looks deliberate that they're avoiding putting a station here. Come on, just pour some concrete down and call it a station. Nobody's expecting a masterpiece. Getting this thing open could help Langport move to the next level. Number 7, Froome. The second largest place on today's list is the town of Froome with a population of 27,000 residents. I'm told that this is another place that my American viewers struggle to pronounce. It's Froome, not Frome or from E. Don't make me vomit. Froome is pretty well located overall. It's in the country, but it's surrounded by good roads. It's only half an hour's car journey to the city of Bath and one hour to the city of Bristol. So you're going to get some country living here, but it's not too extreme. Froome was actually my inspiration behind starting this new series of posh towns. We visited a lot of places on this channel which are negative. I read my comments and the one I see the most is, The whole of the UK is suffering and dying, so how dare you focus on my turd town? Well you're all wrong, and Froome is the best example I can find. Froome is thriving, it's great. Froome looks a bit like a mini version of the city of Bath. Medium sized terrace houses made out of the golden bath stone. As you descend down a steep hill into the shopping area, it's like descending into a pit from hell. No, I'm joking this time, it's not. Don't worry, what you'll find at the bottom of this hill is not a disappointment. I cannot believe how many independent shops Froome has. There's like five different streets that are all laced with these small unique stores. I cannot honestly remember the last time I saw a video game shop. Planet Games. I think these were the second biggest game shops in the UK at one point. A record shop. Wow, shops that people would actually enjoy looking around and browsing. There's a concept for you all right there. I'm sure there was other interesting stuff in Froome, but these two caught my interest the most. Sorry Mary Jane, your knitting shop did not pique my interest. But what the hell, Froome also has five banks that are all still open. Where I live, you have to travel 30 minutes just for one. For you London types watching, basically England is shutting down all its small town banks. They're apparently not profitable anymore. It's extremely inconvenient because the call centres are one of the most painful things a customer can ever experience. But when a town has five banks, you know there must be money flowing around the town. A lot of it. You'll be pleased to know that Froome does have its own private school, so it continues to show its credentials for this list. But it doesn't really continue that trend when it comes to house prices. The average price in Froome is 337000 It sounds like a lot, but it's one of the cheaper on this list. 
Whilst I was in Froome, I didn't hear any crazy posh accents. In fact, Froome was the only place where three different people stopped to chat to me, and they were all genuinely nice people. That isn't something you find in a posh town. Surprisingly, Froome finished as the second safest medium-sized town in Somerset after Porter's Head. You'd have thought it would perform a bit better in that category. Most importantly to me, there's a Starbucks near Froome. These are vital when I'm out on the roads filming and driving for 12 hours straight. Froome is really nice, I just don't think it feels that posh. Whilst the buildings are made out of bath stone, they're in need of a clean. The streets weren't lined with mansions, there was an Audi here. It's like a diamond waiting to be polished. It certainly has its grimy bits right now, but it has so much going for it. So whilst it's not the poshest town I've ever visited, it might be the best town I've ever visited. Well done Froome. Number 6, Porter's Head. Alright, jumping up to North Somerset for this one, and you'll be pleased to know that it's got a completely different vibe to the other places featured in today's video. Porter's Head is a town with a population of around 26,000, making it the third largest place on this list. P-Town is a handy place for commuters for the city of Bristol being only 8 miles away. In the early 2000s, the marina area was developed into an area featuring many flats, houses, bars, shops and restaurants. And this has proved to be a very popular place for the people to live. But the key here is this appeal to a lot of Bristol's young professionals, and they flocked in. This posh town has a completely different atmosphere to anywhere else. Then there's the other half of the town, which is what existed before the marina development. It's mostly on top of a steep hill. The areas along Nor Road and Redcliffe Bay are expensive and have nice views of the Bristol Channel and Wales. And on top of that, you get to keep away from those pesky vile tourists who I'm going to get onto. But first, the average house price here is 437000 which prices first-time buyers out of the market in Porter's Head in most cases. Random side note, Porter's Head has the best Christmas lights in the county, very atmospheric. The secondary school here is Gordano, which was given a rating of outstanding by Ofsted, but you won't find any private schools in Porter's Head. I remember Gordano having a bad reputation growing up, so good on them for turning it around. Porter's Head was rated as the safest medium-sized town in Somerset, and the 144th most dangerous overall out of all of Somerset's town and villages. That is incredibly impressive considering it's the 7th biggest place in Somerset. The shopping here is… average. It could be better. You're going to need to go to Bristol if you want anything for your house or garden. But it doesn't have that many empty units around so I won't mark it down too much. And that really leads me on to the only negative I have to talk about. Porter's Head Railway. Many people purchased houses in the marina area with the promise that Porter's Head Railway would be opening to Bristol, making it an even more desirable commuter belt. But they've dragged their feet and promised and promised and promised. Every time it gets near to election time, the government reveal it will suddenly be happening. Then it doesn't. And surprise surprise, they've just made a fresh promise to open it next year. It won't happen. It's like a mile of track you have to lay for God's sake, pull your fingers out. If this was in London, it would have been done decades ago. There's only one proper road in and out of this town, but it's single file and during rush hour this can be a nightmare. Plus it joins the M5 at Portbury which is renowned for being a section of motorway which constantly has crashes and delays. This place is crying out for its train station. It would make it an even better place to live. There's also gormless tourists who walk around the marina on the weekend staring at the boats and through people's windows of their houses in desperate envy. And talking of these buildings at the marina, after the Grenville Tower incident, a lot of these places had to have their cladding removed, and a lot of people are trapped in cycles where they have to pay for the cladding, so now there's a lot of construction going on around here. But I guess the marina area brings a lot of tourists into Porter's Head and therefore a lot of money, so good on them. The reason Porter's Head doesn't rank higher on this list is mainly due to the look and the feel of the place. It's a great place for young families, you bet, but it doesn't have a posh look to it. The main people who live here are hard-working professionals, You'll still hear the Bristolian accent here. It's a town of hard-working people who have done well for themselves out of their own success. Not old money, I don't mean to be funny. Number 5, Porlock. This place was not how I remembered it as a kid, and for a change on this channel, I mean that in a fairly good way. Porlock is a village with a population of 1400, and it's also a bit of a tourist hotspot because it's in Exmoor, an area of outstanding natural beauty. As a child I came camping here and that's largely how I remembered it, just a village full of hikers and people desperately trying to enjoy an English holiday no matter the weather. Many of you may have heard of Porlock due to the infamous Porlock Hill, a hill that has ended many a person's brake pads on their car. It's really isolated here, the most isolated place on this list. The nearest place of any note is Minehead, around 6 miles away, and even then, as established in a previous video, it's not exactly great in Minehead. 
Porlock may officially be in Somerset, but it feels more like Devon. And don't expect to hear any Somerset accents here. This is one of the few places I've heard the stereotypical posh English accent. You know, like the royal family or something. For my viewers in the US, most people in England do not speak posh like this. Your TV shows are not a true representation of us. It's fine though, I guess it's easier for everyone to understand. Porlock has the sea nearby, although it's just a rocky beach. It's pretty much okay though, because it's fairly quiet here due to being off the beaten track. And for the pleasure of living in such a beautiful part of the world, you can expect to pay extremely high house prices with an average of around 400,000. Shopping here is... I guess it's okay for the size of the place. Several of the shops you'll see in are catering towards tourists and wouldn't be much use to locals, but it's still got a decent amount of shops for a place of 1,400 people. They certainly didn't have any empty units and the street looks good and it's thriving. The only small criticism I can find is the lack of schooling. The nearest is Minehead College, which only received a good rating from Ofsted. But I guess that's what happens when you live in an isolated community. So it's probably best for posh old people as reflected by the fact that 65% of the population are over the age of 45. In 2017 it was reported that Porlock had the highest percentage of elderly people in Britain, with over 40% being of a pensionable age. So Porlock has the looks, it has the stereotypical posh people, it has decent shops for its size and it has fairly high house prices. No doubt a high finish on this list, but I think I could do posher. Oh la -dee da prove it then. Number 4 Bath Bath is the only city to make today's list, and it's most likely the only place on this list anyone watching has ever heard of. This city on the edge of the Cotswolds has a population of 100,000 people. It's extremely touristy here. It's full of visitors. In fact, it's the only place I heard American accents during my visit. Bath is exactly the sort of place I said I wouldn't be featuring on this channel, because everybody already knows about it. I want to shine a light on the lesser known places but I couldn't exactly make a video about posh places and not include Bath without this list losing credibility. If you personally want to rank Bath as number one, that's justified, but it's also very boring. So here's Bath. Bath is full of towering Georgian terrace buildings crafted out of gold and Bath stone. It gives the place a great unique look. It has posh department stores that you would expect, but it also has pretty good shopping for the mere mortals. Bath has an average house price of a whopping 631,000, which is certainly on the high end, even for this list. There's also a lot of private schools in Bath and the surrounding area. Honestly, you're going to be sport for choice if money is no object when it comes to private schooling. The roads in Bath are a bit of a nightmare. There's hardly anywhere to park, and they recently brought in congestion charges for commercial vehicles. I'm sure they'll move that to normal vehicles soon as well. I do not like driving in this city, so just don't. Bath is definitely posh, as long as you stay in the touristy parts. But Bath is hiding some dark secrets that the tourists don't normally stumble across. Number 3. Chu Magna Chu Magna is a large village in North Somerset with a population of 1248. And there's a lot to like about this place, but there's also a major drawback which I'll come on to. Chu Magna is located just 10 miles south of the city of Bristol, but it's also just 15 miles from the city of Bath, so it's an ideal location for commuters. Chu Magna is also located near to the Chu Valley Lake, which is a really nice place to hang out, and it's got the Mendip Hills right by it too. Unfortunately, you can't walk directly around the whole lake, but it's nice to have nearby. So the location of Chu Magna ticks a lot of boxes. It's quiet, but by no means is it isolated. As you drive through Chu Magna, you'll immediately notice the big mansion houses laced along the main street. And all the buildings are pretty old looking, with big leafy trees. So this place certainly ticks the box if you're going for looks. If you want to live in Chu Magna, you will have to look at paying an average of a whopping price of 645000 The only famous person that I know for sure lives in the area is Jacob Rees Mogg in the nearby village of West Harptree. And you know by that accent that it must be a posh area. Surprisingly, Chew Magna isn't that much of an elderly place, with an average of only 40 years old. So it seems like a lot of young successful people must be living here. Speaking of the young, there's no private schools around here, which was a surprise. There is, however, an entire secondary school in the village called Chew Valley School, with a rating of good from Ofsted. So there's a lot going for this place, but there are some not so good bits, which is why Chew Magna is low on the overall list. The shops. They aren't as good as anywhere else on this list. There's just a co-op here, which is pretty small. There is a butcher's, a delicatessen, and a few pubs, but it's not impressive at all. The whole of Chew Valley, including Chew Magna, is hardly served by public transport too, another drawback. Only a couple of days ago it was revealed that there were plans to withdraw the only regular bus route in the village, so that's not great is it? 
But I guess rich people don't use public transport, so it doesn't matter to them. It doesn't make it any less posh here. But for me, the worst thing about Chew Magnet is glaringly obvious. There's only really one road running the length of the village, and it's narrow. Especially narrow, considering all of the parked cars. And this is a busy road, because it's used as a rat run between Bristol and Bath, and the A37 and the A38. Avoid this place like the plague during rush hour, because it's most definitely the worst aspect of Chew Magna. Number 2. Wedmore Wedmore is a village located on a lump above the Somerset levels with a population of 1429, a few miles away from the much more famous village of Cheddar. You've probably never heard of Wedmore, that is until one man changed that all on his own. But first, Wedmore certainly gets a tick in the box for the looks and the feel of the place. The buildings are all crafted out of this stone which I don't really see too many places have. It has the hills in the background and it's all pretty old fashioned. The street lights stuck to the side of the houses are a nice touch, not something you really see in the Somerset area. And there's mansions all over this village, it was not hard finding content on this filming session. Speaking of mansions, the average house price here is 626,000, which is one of the highest entries on today's video for sure. You also see lots of sports cars and expensive SUVs all over the village, so you know the money's flowing here. The main street is really good for a place of Wedmore size. It has a few pubs, a few clothes shops, several hairdressers, a butcher's, a fishmonger's, a post office, you know, all the things you would expect to find in an old English village before it all went wrong. It might not seem like much, but this place is small, and it's not far away from Cheddar or Wells. You'd normally wouldn't get so many shops in a place the size of Wedmore. The thing I like about Wedmore is that it somehow avoids all the tourists despite its close proximity to Cheddar and Wells. It's during this point that you might have to interact with the locals. They're extremely unfriendly and they look at you like turd on their boot. If you're not from here, it might be hard to settle in. I'm sure Wedmore would argue differently of its many festivals and fairs. The people here have a posh vibe. If they weren't all so elderly with failing eyesight, they'd look down their nose at you. The nearest private school is around a 20 minute driveway at Millfield in Street, but there's also a comprehensive school in Cheddar, but it only has a good rating from Ofsted. So I'm sure the Wedmore locals don't send their children to the comprehensive. It's all been good so far, but let's flip that on its head and discuss what Wedmore is most famous for. Convicted paedophile singer Gary Glitter used to live here in Wedmore. So when he went down, Wedmore was mentioned all over the news as his residence. But don't worry, nobody left here is in his gang. If it wasn't for Glitter's disgusting crimes, it would almost be funny winding the people of Wedmore up bringing up Gary Glitter like a dark cloud hanging over them constantly. That aside, that isn't Wedmore's fault and it's definitely posh here and will finish high on this list. Number 1. Dolverton Second Exmoor entry for today's list. Now you thought Porlock was posh, wait for this one. Dolverton is a very small town with a population of 1,100, so Porlock is bigger, but it's classed as a village? Things don't always make sense. Porlock is fairly famous, but I think Dolverton is a bit more of an undiscovered gem, hardly anyone's heard of it. Dolverton sits at the opposite side of Exmoor to Porlock, so it's not near the sea. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have water. No, there's plenty of water all around here because the beautiful river Bar flows right through the town. You know a place is nice when it still looks good on a gloomy winter's day. Unlike many of England's old market towns, this one actually doesn't feel dead, with most of the shops being open for business. And with all the houses on the hill, the wildlife everywhere, the gushing river and the old buildings set around the square, I think Dolverton is not just Porlock beaten in terms of the looks and atmosphere, but I think it trumps the rest of the list. It looks exclusive here. When you come across the river bridge and you enter Dolverton, you almost feel like you're taken back in time. Wow, this is how England actually used to look, before it was ruined. Another area Dolverton has Porlock beaten in is the average house price, which sits at 430,000 in Dolverton, around 30,000 more than Porlock. And I know Dolverton is not at the top of the list for the most expensive places, but it's more isolated than everywhere apart from Porlock. And remember, it's not just about house prices. Posh is almost a mindset, and it's a mindset entrenched into the brains of Dolverton residents. And we're talking like 430,000 isn't a lot. And I'm not really surprised at the price of this place, it looks great, your house will probably be set on the edge of the hill with wildlife next to it, or you'll be over by the river. Either way, the price tag is justified for such a place. I can get why people would want to live here, because it has a wow factor. In terms of getting around, yes, Dolverton is another isolated place, but it's not quite as isolated as Porlock. They should be about the same travel time to Taunton, but the roads to Porlock are worse. The A396 isn't amazing, but the A361 is a dual carriageway, so at least half their journey is going to be quick. 
Also, Dolverton is only half an hour to the M5 motorway, so it's just less frustrating travelling around here. Make sure you mind out for the potholes though. And do you know what else posh people do? They like to go to church. 69% of Dolverton is Christian, which is far above the England average of 49%. I'm not sure I can blame them for going to church though. Look at this graveyard. Have you ever seen such a nice graveyard? I definitely get the posh vibe from anyone I spoke to here. At one point, I was told to kindly move my motor vehicle as I was blocking the turning circle of their horse box. I don't think they would have remained kind if I'd have said no. People here tend to dislike outsiders and they might shoot you with air rifles which they normally use on the pheasant population. But I'm sure they'd get away of shooting you. They've got money after all. In 2009, the owner of the Ivy in London, Richard Caring, purchased a mansion in Dolverton. The locals disliked him so much that they killed two deers and left them dead on his doorstep. Now I've heard of a pig's head, but never a deer's head. I guess it's how the rich make their threats in Dolverton. So that's the list. Do you agree with today's list or did we miss anywhere out? And don't forget to hit like and subscribe and help Turd Towns thrive.